Good evening. Paul Walker was at the center of the $2 billion film franchise that sent him on the fast track to fame. Fast and Furious fans live vicariously through his daredevil stunts, now hitting too close to home. ABC Cecilia Vega has the latest details on the charity event this weekend, where things took a turn for the tragic. Those blue eyes, that smile, that lead foot. For Paul Walker, it was a recipe for Hollywood success. He is the speed demon who rose to fame in the Fast and Furious blockbusters, those adrenaline-crazed street-racing epics, six movies in all, that earned Universal Studios over $2 billion worldwide. But now, this is his Hollywood ending, a fiery crash Saturday that killed the 40-year-old actor and his friend. The red Porsche they were in so mangled it was unrecognizable. The pole they hit snapped in two. Destruction that looked like it could have been a scene in one of his movies, calling into question the fate of the latest one he was in the middle of filming. Walker didn't just play a fast car junkie on the big screen. He was a self-described adrenaline junkie off screen, too. And then there was his love of cars, as he told Entertainment Tonight in May. What's the fastest you've ever driven? Uh, just under 200. I did 197. I haven't broken 200 yet. And you're it's trying to. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. It's just, it's the right car. Everything, I have cars that put out plenty of power and everything, but what, you're, what limits you is aero, aerodynamics. Uh -huh. Here he is shredding tires on a racetrack, a member of a Southern California racing team. That love of speed may have caused this. When rescue crews arrived, the fireball was still burning. Two people dead in this call. One, one of them is Paul Walker. Witnesses tried to put the fire out, too. One of Walker's childhood friends reportedly attempted to pull his body from the burning car. Police had to hold him back. There was nothing. We tried. We went through fire extinguishers. And... So sorry. Walker, the passenger, and his friend, the driver, Roger Rodas, were pronounced dead at the scene. Police still do not know exactly what caused them to lose control, but authorities now say the car they were in was going very fast. And police are looking for surveillance video like this for clues. This is something else authorities are looking into. Skid marks like these to find out if they came from the car Paul Walker was in or from someone else on this road known for fast driving. The car, a Porsche Carrera GT, one of the fastest out there. It sells for more than $400,000, goes from 0 to 125 in less than 10 seconds, and can reach 205 miles per hour. Auto Week magazine says even professional drivers call it scary to handle. But these were professionals. Rodas had championship titles to his name. Does it surprise you, knowing Roger's skill level, that this is the outcome of that joyride yesterday? Well, that's the, that's the answer that I came up here looking for is why, how? I mean, the, the, he's such a skillful driver, but you see this all the time. Jim Torp spoke to both men just before they rode off. They had all been attending a toy drive and car show for Walker's charity, Reach Out Worldwide, to benefit the victims of the typhoon in the Philippines. It was supposed to be a quick joy ride. The crash happened just minutes after they left and just a couple hundred yards away. This is one of the last known videos of Walker right there with that Porsche. I felt in my heart that something was wrong. What did you hear? I heard a, a big bang, like something had hit something, and obviously it did. And um, right after, I saw the smoke and I knew. What was the last thing you heard Paul say? I'll be right back. That was the last thing Paul said, is uh, right before they exited the driveway, he um, looked at uh, some of the guys with the Ferraris and everything else. He goes, hey, I'll be right back in five minutes. That was the last words I heard. The coroner still has not positively identified their bodies. They need the dental records first. Fast and Furious catapulted Walker to fame, but the Glendale, California native had a long road to stardom. He modeled as a child, later turning up in the 80s on such sitcoms as Who's the Boss and Charles in Charge. A decade ago, he told Charlie Gibson even he was surprised by his own success. You ever pinch yourself? Yeah, all the time. Why me? Exactly. It's like winning the lottery. That's what it feels like. But I keep winning it. This 2001 interview with The View now seems haunting. To me, you know, driving fast, like taking pride in your car, that's, that's, that's what guys do. That's America. 
And, uh, you know, racing has always been around, it always will be. This movie, I think it shows that, you know, definitely that speed is fascinating and that it's a rush, but it also shows that there's a lot of risk and there's a lot at stake. There's a lot at stake with this last one, too. For Universal Studios, the Fast and Furious movies are the most successful franchise ever. They have to rethink the whole plans for what was going to be not just movie number seven, but movies seven, eight, and nine. And so there's a a real puzzle ahead of them right now. They've got a much bigger investment than just the next movie in this series. They're thinking about the franchise, they're thinking about the brand, and they're thinking big picture. It's been a while since I've been behind the wheel of one of these. Walker was on break from filming Fast and Furious 7 in Atlanta. He was supposed to return to the set on Monday. How was that one? He was halfway through shooting the new movie. Universal, the, the studio behind the film, is just scrambling, trying to figure out what to do. With the Thanksgiving weekend, they were, I mean, they were just totally caught off guard. Uh, I mean, of course, no one could have foreseen something like this happening. But there's just no backup plan. Varieties. Peter DeBruge says that Universal will need to chart a new course quickly. They've got uh, other stars in the movies uh, who have other commitments. Do you write around him? Do you cut him out of the movie? Do you? you know, try and fake it and shoot around, you know, what you have and, and get a body double to do things. These are questions that they must be pounding their brains trying to figure out this week. James Dean also famously died in a Porsche crash before his final film, Giant, was edited. Let's not blow this out of proportion. When Heath Ledger died of a prescription overdose in 2008, he was working on multiple films. The Dark Knight was nearly complete. It was possible to sort of, uh, you know, nip and tuck and, and get other actors to dub the, the lines and, and really make it look like nothing had gone wrong. I think I might like that. And earlier this year, James Gandolfini, known best for his role as Tony Soprano, died of a heart attack while on vacation in Rome, leaving several projects unfinished. Hey, what's going on? Evacuate him. Come on. Walker also has another movie scheduled for release in two weeks. In hours, he plays a father trying to save his baby daughter during Hurricane Katrina. St. Mary's Hospital, I got a baby I need to rescue. In the real world, he leaves behind a 15-year-old daughter, Meadow, and a grieving family. You lost a, a spirit. You lost a person that maybe is meant to be this way. I, I was, I'm devastated. The scene of the crash, now a memorial spilling into the street. Fans of the movies, even co-stars are showing up, like model and actor Tyrese Gibson, who left in tears mourning a life cut short in a real-life twist that all too closely mirrors the movies Paul Walker made. For Nightline, I'm Cecilia Vega in Valencia, California.